I once designed a logo for a lady who came back to me not even a year later needing a rebrand. Why? Those are some reasons I want to get into today of some mistakes that people make when they're rebranding their business that cost them time and money and mean that they usually have to come back to rebrand again. End result just wasn't what they needed or they didn't do it right in the first place. This is number four in a series that I'm doing all about rebranding for your business. If you've missed the others, make sure you head back and listen. I'll link them in the show notes or below. But in this episode, I want to share with you some of the key things you cannot miss when you're rebranding for your business to ensure it is successful. Let's dive in. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I am a graphic designer who loves teaching business owners how they can create their own incredible, strategic, beautiful, professional brands themselves using programs like Canva and not doing it alone and by themselves where it feels really isolating and really hard and scary. So that lady who needed a rebrand, why? What happened? Well, some of the big reasons I want to share with you today and some of the reasons that really impacted her and her brand were this. Actually, before I get into it too, make sure you hang around because the last mistake I share with you is one of the most popular mistakes that I see and it leaves your brand looking unprofessional. It leaves your brand taking you way too long to actually create graphics with and means that your brand is struggling to get recognized. So the first reason my client's brand didn't succeed, even though she actually hired me as a professional, was because she wasn't clear in what she needed. As a designer, I can't get inside your head or inside your business or get inside your future to work out what you need unless you pay about 20 grand to me for me to do some actual really big deep dives. If you're just hiring a designer just to design your logo, then what happens is they're just taking your lead. And so as the business owner, you need to be so, so clear on what you need. This is a case of you're hiring someone or if you're doing it yourself. And for this client in particular, she knew what she was doing in her business and she had dreams for the future, but she hadn't got them solid yet. And so what that means is I designed a brand for her and I designed a logo for her, but the actual brand didn't connect with what she ended up doing. She kind of pivoted her business not long after we worked together because she gained more clarity quite quickly after that process. And so what I see a lot of business owners doing is they jump into a brand too quickly without having the clarity of what they really, really want their business to be. Now, this is really tricky because oftentimes in business, whether you are starting a brand from scratch or whether you are rebranding, if you're particular, if you're kind of niching or tweaking things a little bit, is you just genuinely don't have that clarity yet. Sometimes you need to work in that space to be able to work out what your business needs from you, what your brand needs from you, who you really want to serve and help. And so that is one of the reasons I actually really encourage people to DIY their brand because oftentimes we don't have a clue what we need. And to be able to design your brand and to do the best job that you possibly can through using things that I teach, but then having that flexibility that, oh, hey, I actually got that wrong. I I, I missed something there. I, I missed an, an, a niche that I wanted to target or I missed an angle I wanted to go with in my business. Because you diy it, you actually have that flexibility and that knowledge. You got to edit it as you go. Like for me and my brand, I'm kind of evolving it at the moment. I wouldn't never have to go back to a designer to be able to do that because I am the designer. But if I needed to, I could actually change most of these things myself because I have that knowledge. I understand the basis of a successful brand. I understand how to talk to my audience. I understand how to connect with them and how to actually use Canva to create something robust. And so because I know those things as a business owner, I can then go and tweak things and and change things as I need to, rather than having to spend another couple of grand with a designer because I actually changed what I needed for my business and I didn't realize. Like that lady had to do with me when I was designing her logo. Another mistake she made is instead of being really strategic about what she needed, she just chose something that was pretty rather than kind of what her audience needed. I I designed a few different logos for her and she chose a really pretty one, but it wasn't exactly what her audience needed. And so it just, it didn't resonate and she had to move on from that logo quite quickly. And so that's a really big point is you need to know your audience. You're not just designing a logo for yourself. Another mistake I see people make is they design a logo that just they like. And often as designers, we have to convince business owners as they actually know just because you love purple doesn't mean your audience loves purple. Thankfully, my audience does love purple a lot of the time. So it works for my brand, but it's okay to not always be perfectly 100% aligned with your business. Now, I said this, this might be confusing because if you listen to me, I always do talk about embedding yourself into your business, particularly if you are a personal brand, but that doesn't mean just doing things that you love. It needs to be combined with strategy around what your audience needs and what you want your business to represent. It's part of my wow brand model. If you've seen me talk about that before. And so really making sure that you think about, is this something that I like, or is this something my audience needs? And does this make sense and connect with them? So making sure you're not just only choosing everything that you want, but really being strategic around that. And so a lot of this comes back to actually doing your research of are you researching one, what your audience needs? Two, 
what other businesses are doing in your niche. Like a mistake people might make sometimes is they actually create a logo that is the same as everyone else in their niche. And while I personally do not believe it is a bad thing to look like your niche, like say if you're a florist, having a flower in your logo isn't the end of the world or using common floral colors isn't the end of the world. But you want to make sure your logo is different from everyone else. You want to make sure you have a little edge to it that's a little bit strategic rather than just pretty that you've actually thought through, oh, I want to do some deeper concepts behind your logo, not just, I'm just going to whack a flower on a pretty font that everyone else is using. You want some differentiating factors in your brand. I actually spoke about in the last episode that we did around brainstorming strategic ideas and conceptual ideas for your logo, because that's what's going to help it to stand the test of time, to not just be something that you just picked that was pretty, but is actually really strategic that meets your audience where it's at, that meets your niche where it's at, that's not copying its competitors, but also fits in nicely into your niche so that you make sense to your audience, that it makes sense that you're a florist, that you'd have purples and pinks and a flower. That is okay because it means that you are a florist, but not copying what everyone else is doing. And that leads me to our next point about copying trends. So often p- business owners just copy the latest trend that they see. They just see a pretty trend and they're like, oh, I want my brand to look like that. I want my logo to look like that. And then next minute they've created this thing that looks incredible in this very, very moment in time, but so, so quickly gets outdated. It gets, it becomes something that is something that people are like, oh, that's kind of ugly because that was popular 10 years ago. A big trend that happened with this recently that is now out of date, for example, is the watercolor logo. The watercolor logos were the in thing when I kind of started designing about 10 years ago. And also those cursive kind of fonts that went with it, the script, beautiful fonts. Um, But they are out of date now. And what it means is that every single logo and business that used that now looks like they're outdated. While I believe it is a good thing to lean into trends at times, because it means your business looks current and looks modern, it also means your business is going to get outdated quickly. So I guess if you're leaning into a trend, that's okay. But bringing in what I mentioned before, what we talked about last episode of using those conceptual ideas for your logo, because it means it will stand the test of time that even if the trend that you're using for your logo, maybe the colors or the style that you're using becomes outdated, your logo isn't totally obsolete because there's a really great concept there. And it means that like there's, I'll I'll put a picture on the screen for those of you watching on YouTube now that businesses do need to update their logos to fit in with the current times, to fit in with the trends. But if that great concept is there, that concept can be up updated slowly and to fit the current trends rather than doing a whole brand overhaul. That means you lose brand recognition and brand loyalty with your customers. Another mistake I see business owners make when they're rebranding their business is overcomplicating things. They try to just put too much and everything inside of their logo or inside of their brand. Um, And there's two sides there. Like what I recommend is having quite a simplified logo. If you watched my last YouTube tutorial, I redesigned five popular logos like that are just like famous logos in the world. And they were really actually quite simple. And having a really simple logo is really important for the versatility of the logo and for the longevity of it and for the way that you can use it large and small in different places and different scenarios. But so many times people overcomplicate this and they try to put too much into their logo. They try to put all the watercolors and all of the fonts and all the ideas and all the different concepts, but really we just want to keep it to one or two concepts, one or two fonts maximum, a couple of colors, if that, and keeping that quite simple and then putting the rest of the designs into our whole visual brand. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But just remember, Remember, simplicity speaks louder. And so keep things simple because when you overcomplicate things, it outdates faster. It's harder for you to actually use in practice. It's going to be too many conflicting ideas. So it means that your logo isn't going to be cohesive and it's going to be quite confusing to look at because nothing kind of gels together because there's too many things trying to gel together. Another huge mistake I see people make, especially when they're DIYing their brand or they get a really cheap graphic designer to do it, is they're not having the right quality of logo. They're not creating a vector file of their logo. A vector file is a particular file type that means that your logo is able to be stretched really large and maintain its file quality. This means that it never loses its crispness. It means that it can actually be changed colors really, really easily. Watercolor logos cannot do this. And it means that it's not going to be versatile. And so having a really great quality file is really important. So having a vector file, having a really great transparent background file so making sure that there's no like white background behind your logo and then having all the different file types you need like having a white sort of logo having a black logo having the different variations of your logo which again I chatted about last week in the logo brainstorming session so many businesses just either create one version of their logo and they don't create all the different variations they don't create all the different file types and when you have like when you're sending a shirt off to get embroidered you need an SVG file or when you're creating a logo on Canva and you need to put your logo onto like a what as a watermark you need it in white we need all these different variations of our logo to make sure that our business can be applied to all the different uses it is because your business isn't just one static thing in one static place. It needs to be marketed in all sorts of different ways and shared in all sorts of platforms. And so having that versatile professional logo that is in 
in the right file types has been made with quality in mind means that it's going to stand the test of time. It means that it's going to be quality. It means that it's going to look professional because if your logo looks pixelated or it's got a white background behind it all the time or it looks really rubbish, it means that people are going to judge your brand and your business as being unprofessional because your logo looks unprofessional. Another mistake I see business owners make, particularly when they're DIYing their graphics and their logo inside Canva, is they're just stealing random Canva graphics for their logo instead of creating them from scratch. Now, technically Canva's rules allow you to use different elements for your logo. However, I would not recommend this. Again, I've got a whole video on this. I'll link this. I'll link it here if you're watching on YouTube. But in essence, if you're using random templates you see on Canva, not only does that mean your logo is not unique because anyone and their dog and their cat could use that exact same template. I'm dog and a cat using Canva, pretty impressive. But anyone else could be using that exact same template and have the exact same logo as you. Not what you want to be doing for your business. You want to stand out. And secondly, it means that if you ever want to trademark your logo, it is not something that you can trademark because you do not uniquely own it. So I always recommend my students and my clients and what I do with my co-creation club design students is that we create their brands from scratch. We either draw it from scratch or we create it from scratch in Canva using shapes and lines and different elements that are already existing there that we can build it rather than just copying what already exists. And before I get to that final mistake I wanted to share with you that is the biggest one that people make, I want to share with you one other mistake, which is not launching your brand strategically. Oftentimes, especially if you're doing a rebrand, especially if you're really changing things up, I often recommend people just doing a brand refresh. So like I showed you with all of those um, logos that like, say for example, the Shell logo, its essence hasn't actually changed, but it's just updated throughout time. And that's just been a brand refresh. They've been able to just update their actual core logo with the current trends. And I think that's a really great thing to do. But if you're especially doing a ginormous overhaul and everything is changing. Big mistake I see people do is not relaunching their brand strategically. They kind of just pop it out there in the world and it's like, oh, hey, this is me work with me. And it's like, well, no, if you've spent years building rapport already with your audience through this current brand, can't just switch it on them because it leads to you losing brand recognition and brand loyalty. So what I recommend doing is launching your brand really slowly and strategically and letting your audience know what's coming, showing them little teaser of these things. I've got a whole episode going over how to relaunch your brand successfully. I'll share that with you in the show notes or in the description. But I see that as a big way that people lose they lose momentum in their business when they rebrand their business, but they don't launch it successfully. And before I get into this final mistake I see business owners making, I wanted to share with you, if you are doing a rebrand for your business and you don't want to do it alone, but you do want to have that autonomy and the skills and the fun of doing it yourself, I would love to help you in the Co-Creation Design Club. It's a program that I've got where you can work with me to design your brand, to design your graphics. It's a long-term program. We can work closely together and I kind of act like the creative director in your business. We can brainstorm your logo. We can brainstorm your rebrand. We can do those things together live together on a call and you can make sure you rebrand your business right so you're not wasting time you're not losing brand recognition and you're showing up professionally so if you'd like support there make sure you head to the link in the description and I'll pop all the details you need to know about the co-creation design club there and the final mistake I say business owners do that is one of the biggest mistakes is they only focus on their logo or they only focus on the logo and a tiny bit of their brand your brand is so much more. Your visual brand is so much more than just your logo. It's a whole plethora of things. And either people just focus on their logo and that's not what we want to be doing because your brand is so much more than that. Just think about like, if you want to show up on Instagram and you've only got a logo, what colors are you making your social media post? What fonts are you going to use? Same with your website, same with your flyers, same with your presentation slides. If, you don't, if you've only got a logo, you've got no direction to create the rest of your graphics and there's no brand recognition there because people are barely actually seeing your logo. Like if you think about my brand, you probably barely know what my logo looks like, but you know my whole brand. Brand, you know, it's purple, you know, it's fun. You know, there's all these kind of things going on. It's my full brand that you recognize, not just my logo. So many business owners just focus on their logo. They put all their eggs in this one logo basket and it just falls flat because they can't use that logo everywhere. You're not putting your logo on every single social media post on every single person. Like you're not putting it everywhere. So it needs to be more, it needs to have legs. And so what you also need is your is your brand fonts and your brand colors. So colors you can use everywhere, fonts you can use everywhere, a selection of those. But beyond that, you need more because you could have the same fonts and the same logo and the same colors, but still have a very different looking brand if you have a different kind of style or a different kind of elements you use. And so choosing as well, like what kind of elements and style you'll use in your business. Are you going to be really minimal brand and just have maybe some lines and some shapes and really like large text, etc.? Or are you going to have a really fun brand that's got lots of fun and playful elements and cool, cool geometric patterns or whatever? You could have the same brand logo, colors, and font in both of these brand styles. And so having that brand style is really what puts legs on the rest of your design. So making sure you don't forget your brand logo, your brand colors, your brand fonts, your brand elements, your brand style, even your brand photography choice, 
All these different things will make that full brand for your business. So I'd love to know which of these mistakes was a big aha moment for you that you're like, oh, I need to make sure I don't do that. Or I made that mistake already and I want to make sure I avoid it next time. Feel free to send me a message on my Instagram, which is my handle is white deer, like the color white, the animal deer and GD. And I'd love to know what your biggest takeaway was, what your biggest aha moment was, or you can pop that in the comments if you're listening on YouTube. And don't forget to join me next week for our final episode in this rebranding series of how rebranding can change the trajectory of your business, how it can help you to increase sales and make more money in your your business. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for joining me for this one. I'll see you next week for another episode. Bye.